and I've said this to some of you, I may have said this here already, each one of you has had about 4,000 ancestors come together to create who you are in the last 400 years. 4,000 people to create you. You are a gift. Let's talk about the health con continuum. This is the key to understanding emotions. Most be people believe that health is the opposite of what? Disease, right? For me, the opposite of disease is actually ease. Okay? And so when we look at the health continuum, this is what we work on. I don't believe that there are anything, there, there's, there's any kind of healthy or unhealthy. I believe that your health is diseasy or easy. Matter of fact, it's not a belief, it's a knowledge. You're either easy or diseasy. You're never unhealthy. Your health is somewhere along that continuum. Now, I've had people talk a lot of shit to me about what it is. I've been a nurse for 31 years. You can argue with me all you want. Sounds good. Tell me more about your argument. When you can convince me of, when you can convince me of otherwise, when you, can, when you can show me that there was something different than this, then show it to me. I'm open for anything. I'm a skeptic, even with my own shit. But for right now, this is what I know. Health is actually the place between disease and ease. That's where you'll see me talk about it. It will always be this way. Let's dive a little deeper. Healthy, the context that we use healthy, the word healthy breaks into two words, heal and thy. Heal thy, okay? Heal. Heal means to make free from disease or, in, or injury. That's what heal means, right? Thy is of or relating to the self, okay? So heal thy is to make the self or part of the self free from disease or injury. And that disease part doesn't need to be in there. Free from injury or illness. That should read, not disease. Free from illness. Okay? So the healthy aspects, right? Oh, look, it's the hierarchy of esteem again. These are all the aspects of you that can be healed and are healing right now, and they're always healing. Healing is a process that's always going. You're always either making yourself more easy or making yourself more diseasy, or you're floating in the middle. It's not a static process. There is no end point to healing. That is a fallacy. I want to be healed. You will hear a lot of this, and you may say this a lot yourselves. I want to be healed. There is no end point to this. The end point to healed is being dead. <laughs> okay, you're healed into the planet. And even that, your parts are going to be healed into some other animal, into some biome, into something else. You're constantly recycling. So these aspects of spirit, mind, construct, heart, body, biome, they are all fluctuating and changing into different spaces all the time. Are they easy? Are they diseasy? That's the question. And what do you need to do to strategize to get these different aspects of yourself to be easier, this easy? Do you have a question? Just real quick, what about being healed from something specific? Is that more of a acceptable thing? I want to be healed from this virus or healed from, that would be acceptable, so to speak? Yeah. You can use that language, that's fine. It's none of this, none of what I'm sharing is law. Everything that I'm offering is a theoretical framework for you to put languaging on what I'm doing so that we can be in a mutual context. So to be free from an illness is what I would be, I would consider that healed from that illness and I'm still healing into something else. I'm creating myself into something else. Yes, and. So that's not an exclusionary situation. I'm talking about being healed as a person in totality. You're ne there's, it's always a healing process. As I speak, I'm wearing out my inner cheek and my body is actually replenishing it all the time. This is a study we did when I was in nursing school. You're always pulling. The cheeks are the most replenished place in your body other than your, in your intestines. The most replenished place in your body because you're always talking. You're always chewing. And this is always healing itself. If not, you'd have big holes in the side of your face. You're always replenishing, y'all. We have a new body every seven years. Every seven to 10 years, we have a new whole body. It's crazy. And what could you do in seven to 10 years if you changed what you were eating into something different? 
when I did vegan for five years, my, my whole body was different. And now I'm eating different and I'm moving into a different body. So every seven years, you replace every part of your body, every part of it. And so what are you building it with? Okay, this is important. Thank you for that distinction, family. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. So the healthy aspects also include your relationships and your interactions. Okay, healthy relationship, heal thy relationship. If your relationship is wonky, what do you need to do to bring that into a space of ease? How many people are in relationships that are not very easy right now? Be it intimate relationships, be it business relationships, be a relationship with your food, be a relationship with water, relationship with the air, relationship with the, floor, with the carpet in your house, relationship with the paint on the walls, relationship with that smell in the garage, right? Okay, this is an important thing that gets bypassed, okay? And so relationships are a huge part of your healing field. If you are walking into a space that you're disconnected from, your connection may need to become more easy. And if you're walking in your house and there's shit you don't like in your house, something is not safe for you. And you're not going to connect. And you may be like, I don't understand why I can't do this. But every time you walk in the house, you start frowning and you don't know why. And it's a picture on the wall that you fucking hate. But your partner loves it. What do you do? Your relationship is disrupted. Does this make sense? This is very important stuff, y'all. So I want you to consider all of these things. What is healing? It's ongoing. This is a creative process. Your body is one of the most creative things in the fucking world, in existence. As you're speaking right now, your body is re-articulating. When you have something that flutters and you have butterflies in your stomach, right, that feeling, you're actually pushing certain hormones into your body so that your body can prepare to shift into something different, a different action, a different growth pattern, something different, okay? So this is always going on. Make sense? Cool. So. The health continuum is connected between the ease and disease space, right? It's the current location on that continuum. And so health can be easy. Health can be dis easy, dis easy. If you want to talk about the language of easy and dis easy, talk to Laz. Laz uses this language in everything that he's doing and is wonderful because he reflects it back to me. Man, I'm not feeling easy today. I'm feeling a little dis easy in this. My, my situation, my family is a little dis easy. And we jog back and forth. And that's the type of shit that I've been looking for all my life is to be able to have a language with people that we can volley on. Some of y'all throw this language back at me better than I could ever dream of articulating it. This is wonderful for me because it retrains me to get into these patterns. Thank you, Laz. Appreciate you, fam. So at times, health can be both easy and diseasy at the same time. You can be easy in your career or diseasy in your career and easy in your family. And this can be in multiple places at the same time. And so figuring out where disease can be rooted can be challenging because it can be multiple things like this here. You have your friendships, you have your body, you have your career, you have your marriage. What does that look like? All those things. We talked about it yesterday. Multi-construct strain. When your constructs are pulling at each other, it can cause discord and this can cause overwhelm because, well, I feel happy here and I feel shitty here and I feel this here and I feel this there and I feel this and that's what it sounds like and you get overwhelmed and you stop overwhelm is an emotional space and if you want to write this down you can overwhelm is an emotional space i call it a matrix emotion because it has a lot of things involved in it there is one antidote to overwhelm one antidote simplify that's it not simplify. <laughs> it's not the Marines, but they could simplify too. Marines are very task oriented. Can we get a mic back there? Repeat. Overwhelm is a matrix emotion. Yeah, thank you. It is a matrix emotion alongside guilt and shame. They are matrix emotions. And I say they're matrix emotions because they have a lot of, they're not one space. There are many emotional spaces at the same time, and it causes us to be overwhelmed so that we behave a certain way. We either shut down or we conform. If you want to get somebody to conform, overwhelm them. The nervous system can't handle it. And so when you have people, speaking of the Marines, when you have people like the Marines and Navy SEALs, 
they are trained to be overwhelmed so that they are able to function with multiple things going on. I am an ER nurse. The reason I can handle so many things is because I was overwhelmed in the beginning of my career and I learned how to navigate 150 bodies in an emergency room moving with people dying and people with cuts on their fingers and all kinds of shit at the same time. I had to learn how to prioritize and my nervous system is really good at it. So there are different ways to adapt to overwhelm.